Hi, my name is Trevor and I'm a PhD student at Harvard Medical School. Today, I'm presenting GOSS, a declarative genomics visualization library for Python that's designed for computational biologists. With GOSS, you can create rich, interactive visualizations within computational notebooks, such as Jupyter, JupyterLab, or Google Colab, which can be exported and shared widely on the web. Existing genomics visualization tools are tailored towards specific tasks and are limited in terms of expressiveness. The Gosling visualization grammar for genome map data, in contrast, defines a general set of primitives to transform and map genomics data sets to visual properties. This grammar-based approach yields building blocks to compose scalable and interactive genomics visualizations in a more expressive manner. Visualizations are constructed from atomic elements rather than piecing together larger predefined templates like most genome browsers. Although Gosling is extremely flexible, its JSON representation is less ergonomic to construct directly with programming languages that might be familiar to computational biologists like R or Python. However, logical programming languages can greatly simplify the expression of complex visualizations, which contain many layered or repeated elements, by using language features such as variables, for loops, or conditionals. Additionally, web-based genome visualization software such as Gosling and many other genome browsers often require the administration of a web server to deploy these tools. This prerequisite often poses a barrier to entry for many and limits the use of these otherwise widely adopted tools at the end of bioinformatics pipelines rather than during an analysis. GOSS addresses these limitations with an API that's designed for computational biologists. GOSS exposes a simple, object-oriented Python API for authoring valid visualizations with the Gosling visualization grammar. GOSS renders visualizations created with this API directly in computational notebooks like Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab, and Google Colab. And finally, GOSS allows the seamless visualization of local, remote, and in-memory datasets by transparently hosting these data for the web-based visualization. Together, these features allow the use of Gosling during analysis and enable new interactive analysis workflows. At its core, the Goss library provides a simple Python API for authoring valid Gosling visualizations. In fact, the majority of the Python API is automatically generated from the formal Gosling language schema. This feature guarantees that all visualizations are type checked in complete concordance with the Gosling grammar and that Goss will remain consistent with the evolving schema over time. Goss exposes two fundamental building blocks for genomics visualizations. A GOSS track is the core component of a genomics visualization that defines an explicit mapping of transformations to genomics data to visual properties. A GOSS view is simply a grouping of one or more tracks which share the same linked genomic domain. With the GOSS API, we bind an abstract genomics data set to a track object, and then we can quickly experiment with different visual marks or encodings. Here I'm creating a track object. I'm binding our data source, I'm specifying a, a mark that is a point mark, and then I'm providing a different encoding. I can modify the encoding for different types of marks to create a new visualization. New tracks can be derived from existing tracks or combined to create more complex and integrated visualizations. In this example, we combine a gene annotation view with several single cell attack seek tracks to provide context when exploring these data. The ability to use the Python language features like functions and for loops makes this process very simple. The GOSS library does not contain any visualization rendering code. Instead, it simply exports user-defined JSON data structures which adhere to the Gosling grammar and can be rendered in a variety of web-based user interfaces. The emitted JSON is rendered automatically in computational notebooks using the Gosling.js JavaScript library. This HTML-based output overrides the text-based representation typically displayed for Python objects within notebooks. However, we can easily extract the resulting JSON using the toJSON method and save this to a file or copy the contents to the online Gosling editor. Similarly, we can save our visualization to standalone HTML for offline use outside of our notebook. You may also configure your own renderer if you'd like to embed your Goss visualization in a separate application.
GOSS optionally further integrates within interactive computational environments to transparently serve genomics data formats for Gosling visualizations via a background web server. This feature eliminates the need for end users to administer a web server or think about data locality. Instead, users may interchangeably provide remote URLs or local file paths for their visualizations. From the example earlier, I can download one of the single cell attack seek tracks locally and change my configuration to reference this local file. See how the visualization remains the same. GOSS additionally supports loading in-memory data from Pandas data frames. This feature allows users to iteratively plot intermediate or derived information during their analysis. Thank you for stopping by my virtual poster. If you're in Madison, please come by my poster at BioViz. Otherwise, check out the materials for Gosling tutorial that we presented earlier at ISMB 2022, which include Jupyter Notebooks. A collection of community examples can also be found in our Goss documentation. We would love to see your visualizations in our gallery. Please reach out if you have any questions.